And now we have a, a, a young man who's taken a really extraordinary act, if in, indeed he has done what the U.S. Army has accused him of doing. Bradley Manning, a 22-year-old uh, private first class intelligence anal analyst, is accused of leaking uh, documents that show, that reveal the true nature of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Included in that is the video, Collateral Murder. Yeah, picking up the wounded. Come on, let us shoot. A push master, Crazy Horse 1A. Clear. Come on. Clear. Clear. Warrant. Oh yeah, look at that, right through the windshield. <laughs> hey, uh, I need to get the rat, the brass to drop ramps. I got a wounded girl, we need to take the rust of my and again, Ethan is the GI in the film who grabs the children. What I saw was a small girl about four years of age on the passenger side of the bench seat. She had a severe belly wound and was covered in glass. The glass was in her hair and in her eyes. Next to her, half on the floorboard, with his head resting on a seat, was a boy about seven years old. He wasn't moving, and from the severe wound to his right head, my first thought was that he was dead. In the driver's seat was who I immediately concluded must have been the children's father by the way he was hunched over in a protective manner over the children. I immediately grabbed the girl and screamed for a medic. Spectre Radio Spear 02 at flight, free change zone 1. Bushmaster 6, Hotel 26, over. 20, Commando 8, Niners active, Port Arrival 311. 20. Magnet Radio, aggressive 34, Zone 208, for Zone 1, call for change. The only question that I can think of right now to ask is do we know what happened to those children? Uh, I do know what happened to the children. They both survived. Me and Josh Stieber, who was, who was also in the unit, wrote a, a letter to Iraq. I don't know if you guys have seen it. You can, you can, you can see it on www.lettertoirac.com. Um, that letter was taken to the mother of the children in Iraq. Um, and she, she said that she could forgive us. Right. Now, uh, there was an RPG there. Um, I, did not, I did not see personally an RPG round. And there was an AK-47. Uh, the, the Apaches were not being fired at. Um, they mistook uh, uh, the journalist uh, camera from around the corner. You can see it's clearly a camera. I mean, an RPG doesn't have a blunt end like that. Um, and yeah, you know, my personal opinion is uh, that they saw cameramen, and this happens in Iraq all the time. Uh, the Iraqis will come out with their weapons and be like, hey, look at me, you know, this is for me to protect my house and stuff like that and um, kind of like put, you know, take a picture of me and put me in a newspaper or, or something like that. These guys had nothing to do with anything that was going on that day. They were standing around doing nothing and, you know, they, they weren't firing on us. So, um, no, they weren't a part of any insurgency. When I was in Iraq, we, our battalion commander, um, which was also the XO of, of Pat Tillman um, in Afghanistan, uh, we were getting hit by IEDs on a regular basis. Um, he was getting really frustrated, and he, he came out to our cop and um, sat us down and, and gave us orders for, uh, he said, from now on, when you get hit by an IED, I want 360 degree rotational fire. You kill every motherfucker on the street. Came out to our cop, he looked at the picture, and this is, this is a beloved friend of ours um, who we touched the picture every time we went out. Um, it was a picture of him wearing, that, wearing the helmet and his wife and his children. And uh, he walked in and he goes, oh, look at him with his retard helmet on. <laughs> this guy had, no, this guy had no, no care for his soldiers. We were just pieces of meat to be used. The video, um, I had been trying to speak out uh, um, about Iraq from the time I got, uh, time I got back, the time I got out of the Army. Um, Nobody wanted to listen to me. Nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. Um, but as soon as this video came out and it was found out that I was the soldier on the ground, then all of a sudden everybody wanted to hear what we had to say. And, you know, I have to think, you know, if Bradley Manning is, is 
the man who, who released the video, I have to thank him for, for showing, showing America, not just America, but the world, uh, what truly happens in war. And, you know, this is, uh, this is, a, this is a, Bradley Manning's a man who uh, obviously couldn't, uh, couldn't, couldn't allow this video not to be seen um, if, he, if he did, in fact, release it. Um, so I think we all do need to stand behind Bradley Manning as a, as a courageous, um, as a courageous person for doing what he did. Well, we, what, what Bradley Manning has done is breaking through a systematic cover-up of war crimes that go on every single day in these wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, so uh, no, no one's in a better position to support GI resistors than veterans, and certainly veterans for peace. There are things we can do right now to support Bradley Manning. The Bradley Manning Support Network, of which Veterans for Peace is part, have called for International Days of Action, September 16th through 19th. There's lots of things you can do on those days. Up in the Northwest, we are organizing regionally to go to Fort Lewis. We're going to have a Bradley Manning Support Rally right outside the gates of Fort Lewis. And we're going to show up with the new symbol for the Bradley Manning campaign, our whistles. Let's blow the whistle on war crimes. This is the My Lai massacre. This is the girl running down the road with napalm burns. This is what people in this country need to see. Who lies? Who, lies? who, dies? who dies? Who pays? Who, who profits? Who, who lies? Who dies? Who pays? Who profits? Who lies? Who dies? Who pays? Who profits? Who dies? Who dies? Who dies? 